Hello again, my name is Matthew and you're watching Shuttle Engineering. Now before I begin, I want to just explain what my channel is about as I didn't properly go through it in my last episode. So my channel is going to cover the making of projects, and the most part it will cover 3D printing, but this is because this is all I have available in the minute. But I intend to cover other fields such as electronics and programming, as these are disciplines I really want to learn. As for this episode, I want to jump back into the design of a 3D printed tank. Now, Obviously, I don't want to copy every other individual's design on YouTube, so I want to use this opportunity to learn how a conventional drive system works on a tank, as they always use a single engine design. This is in comparison with the dual electric motor design of most remote controlled tanks. Obviously, the tanks used during the war were capable of skid steering, as well as being able to traverse forwards and backwards. I want to know how they were able to achieve this while using a single drive mechanism and to see if I can 3D print a working model to illustrate the principle. A quick side note, as you can tell, I've changed my microphone and now I don't sound like I'm trying to eat the bloody thing. For that matter, I've upgraded the microphone to a Blue Yeti Snowball Ice. It definitely sounds significantly better than my last microphone and I should have spent a small amount more on this than buying a slightly cheaper one just to buy another microphone down the line. Well, I originally assumed that the microphone couldn't be that bad because the price wasn't rock bottom and my first impression was that it seems to have a good build quality and that I didn't know how to use it properly and that's why the sound reproduction was terrible but after several attempts of trying to improve the sound reproduction I gave up and decided to go and buy a new microphone one at least that has been recommended by a significant amount of YouTubers it's of a curiosity I opened up the old microphone to see what was in it but while I can't tell if the microphone was any good or for that matter the electronics I noticed there was a large chunk of steel in the microphone. It definitely shows that if something f is heavy, it feels like a good quality product, but this is something I should keep in mind for the next time I buy something. Back onto this episode's project. Now, the drive mechanism used that I'm interested in is the triple differential steering mechanism, also known as the Merrick Brown triple differential. Now, what I'm going to do is to break the drive mechanism down into three sections, split between three episodes. First, in this episode, it's a planted gearbox. The second are the differential gears, and the last will be the brakes, and a completed drive mechanism thereafter. So, compared with the last attempt, the 10 to 1 spur gearbox, this design will be more compact, and I have gone with a 20 to 1 gear ratio to extract as much power for, uh, from the motor as possible. This is because small motors like these, while well, high powered, the majority of the power is angular velocity, not torque. As to how I designed the planetary gearbox, here's how I did it. To start off, the 20 to 1 gear ratio was more of an arbitrary figure, and as the motor that I'm using can spin up to approximately 50,000 RPM at its highest rated voltage, a drop of 20 times would bring the RPM into a more reasonable value. Although it is possible to work backwards from a non-linear speed to determine the gear ratio for the motor, assuming that the motor had a sufficient torque, this would be only be practical to work for remote control vehicles as the power to weight ratio is extremely high and obviously this would be, wouldn't be would be practical for the real life vehicle. To keep it compact I've decided to build the planetary gearbox as a two stage gearbox as this design will be longer and more manageable for an RC vehicle rather than a pancake shape as there will be two sets of small gears rather than one set of large gears. Now to work out the gear ratio of either stage assuming that they're equal I calculated the square root of 20 to find the gear ratio so in my case the square root of 20 will be 4.47, therefore each stage of the planetary gearbox must have a gear ratio of 4.47. Now, using this and another arbitrary figure for the module of the gear, in my case 1mm, I first modelled one of the planetary gears, whereby I used a trial, the trial and error to find the smallest number of teeth that would fit my bearings. In my case, I'm using a 3mm bearing with a outer diameter of 10mm, and so I chose to use 16 teeth for my planetary gears. The number of teeth in the sun gear was found, again, by a trial and error, by seeing how many teeth are required to keep the planetary gears from touching one another, and to have a small amount of room left over for the planet gear carrier. As for the ring gear and sun gear, these determine the gear ratio of the stage, so to determine the gear ratio of the equation is the number of teeth in the sun gear plus the number of teeth in the ring gear over the number of teeth in the sun gear. After rearranging the equation, the ring gear can be calculated by first multiplying the gear ratio by the number of teeth in the sun gear then subtracting the number of teeth in the sun gear from the products of the sun gear and the gear ratio. In my case, the ring gear has been calculated to 45.11 teeth. Concerning the CAD design, I decided to give the ring gear 46 teeth 
as this allows for a small gap between the plate gears and the uh, ring gear to compensate for the tolerances of my 3D printer. Afterwards, using the partial 3D, uh, partial 3D model, I designed the remainder of the planetary gearbox around the gears. And um, before anyone says yes, what I've just explained to you, explained to you is daft. But I don't know how much torque I need to transfer through the gearbox. And um, so far, I haven't designed the remainder of the triple differential drive system and the tracks. So I can't work backwards to determine a suitable gear ratio. Also, without the material strength, I cannot calculate the gear size. So it's an educated guess in order to build a practical gearbox. It's only really useful for remote control vehicles. So here we are, the 20 to 1 planetary gearbox. Now, I've gone from the spur gearbox to the planetary gearbox to improve the shape in order to fit it into an IC vehicle. And it has the added benefit of having a higher gear ratio as well as a higher torque capability. Now, the, as the module for the both gearboxes is the same, the maximum torque that can go through the gearbox is four times gr as great as there are four planetary gears compared with the single contact uh, gear in the spur gearbox. Besides the comparison between the two gearbox types, I've built upon the design aspects that I think have worked well and modified the aspects that haven't been as useful. Starting off, the threaded inserts proved to be useful in the assembly process and proved to be strong enough to hold the gearbox together. However, I have found the previous design that not every 3D printed component sit flush with one another and the problem was that the insert produced, produced flash that protruded above the surface of the part which stopped the mating, part, uh, mating components from being flush. To fix this, on the new design I've incorporated a chamfer where the brass insert would reside. So this would accomplish two things. One, the first would be to allow the insert to be aligned more easily while it has been uh, melted into place. The second would be to the recess the insert into the part so if uh, there is any pl uh, flashing of the plastic this would only be below the component surface. The next design modification is the use of 3mm down to dowels. Now these are used to align the 3D printed components so the ring gears and the plank carriers are not dependent on the fasteners as these are positioned on very loose tolerances. Now this will ensure that, that once the gearbox is assembled the gears are aligned and this will prevent excessive friction and wear. As for the last major modification I've reduced the main shaft sizes from 8mm to 3mm because I can reduce the size of the gearbox and it is more more of a guess, but I would expect the gear teeth to fail before the smaller 3mm shafts. Right, it's time to get on with the build.
close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us, and love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah, no, I don't want to waste what's left. And I Through the sun rays And on and on We'll go Through the wastelands Through the highways And on what I expected to do. It converts the speed of a motor to 20 times le uh, less at the output shaft. As for the actual design, there were a few modifications that had to be completed, as I had missed a few things that I only saw during the assembly process of the gearbox. The first 
was that it was difficult to slide the sun gears and the planetary gears into the respective gears. Now, this was due to my 3D printer being poorly calibrated. As the print nozzle was too close to the print bed, the side effect was the widening of the first few layers of the print. To combat this, I had added chamfers to the gears as this would compensate for the poorly level 3D printer and allow for an easy assembly. Now, the next is slightly more difficult. I modified the tolerances to allow for a interference fit for the bearings and dowels, but this depends a lot on how accurate 3D print your 3D printer is, and I can only design the tolerances to fit my own. At least with this design, if the components are slightly loose, they're, they're held in, in place by fasteners and they won't be able to loosen over time. The next is that I've added dowels into their sun gears. This is to ensure the sun gears are aligned with the plank carriers and the plank gears. As for the last, I originally chose to use N3 nuts to hold the planet carriers together. Fortunately, these managed to shake loose within seconds of trying to assemble the gearbox, and so I've changed these to nylock nuts. Right, it's time to end this episode. Hope you've enjoyed this episode and hope to see you on the next one. Bye.